See, ladies and gentlemen, there's absolutely no point. If you haven't tried this already on your own, then how are we going to know if you even uh, did this correctly? Now, we have been gone away for an extended period of time, so I do kind of understand it's been a while. But, guys, you have to at least break the problem down and give it a shot. If you haven't even gotten that far, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to even understand what you're doing right or wrong. So the first thing I'm going to, I ask you to solve for x, and then I say solve for y. So I want to solve this equation for both x and y. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to do it two different ways. Solve for x. So when I solve for x, what I want to do is I want to get x to equal something. That means I want x by itself. So to do that, what I need to do is I need to undo everything that's happened to the x. So over here, if you guys can see, I have a negative 4x plus 3y equals 12. So I look and say, what is everything that's happening to my x? Well, it's being added by a 3y. So to undo addition over 3y, I subtract 3y. Therefore, I have negative 4x equals 12 minus 3y. You cannot combine 12 minus 3y to get 9y or to get the number 9. y represents a number that we don't know. So you cannot combine them together. So just leave it as 12 minus 4y. Then the last thing we need to do is say, all right, now what is happening to that x? Well, it's being multiplied by negative 4. So to undo multiplication, we divide. So therefore, that cancels out to give me 1. And I'm left with x equals. Now, if you guys notice, I have to divide this negative 4. I can simplify this. 12 divided by negative 4 is going to give me a negative 3. And then negative 3 divided by, divided by negative 4 will give you a positive 3 fourths y. So just remember when you have something that's dividing on two numbers on top, you can divide that number into them to simplify it. Why can't you just put like 3 minus y? Sorry? Like if, like you have like negative and a positive, just switch it around make it look easier for you. Well, I um, you mean as far as this, rewrite it? Yeah, I mean like it's like negative 3 plus something. Would, like, well, be usually, what well, I haven't finished, usually what we want to write is you always want to write your variable in front. So yeah, usually what I'm going to have is I'll write it like this. As I'm done completing, x equals 3 fourths y minus 3. So that's what you're talking about. We usually like to always write the variable in front of our constant. All right. Now for this one, that's solving for x. So when I say solve for y, now what I want to do is I want to get y to equal something. And if you guys notice, remember I said solve for x, x equals something. Look at x equal. x is all by itself. So when I say I want to solve for y, I want y to equal something. So we look at y and we say, what is happening to the y? Well, it's being subtracted by 4x, and it's being multiplied by 3. So to, un to get rid of that 4x, I need to add 4x. So I have negative 4x plus 3y equals 12. So remember, I'm trying to get the y all by itself. So I add a 4x. 3y equals 12 plus 4x, all right? It does not equal 16x, nor does it equal 16. 12 plus 4x equals 12 plus 4x. Now I need to undo multiplication of 3 by dividing. And here I'll actually do a little, again, now here, um, 4 divided by 3, we can just leave as 4 thirds x. And 12 divided by 3, we can just leave as 4. And I rearrange these, kind of like uh, what Steve was talking about earlier. I just rearrange them because that's the way I'm going to write it at the end anyways. So, so all I do is I divide the 3 into the 12 and 3 into the 4. Any questions? Nothing? Yet? Maybe? Yes? Um, why do you have to take away the, uh, the one with the variable to the right? Um, like see where you have negative 4x plus 3y, how do you have to take uh, get rid of the 3y instead of 4x? For which one? Solve for x or solve for y? Solve for x. Solve for x. Solve for y. 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 Sol